Hey, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have come today to break the bread. Amen. Jesus Christ is the bread. And he was broken for us. Amen. 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 He was broken for us so we would have a taste of heaven and taste and see that the Lord is good and observe and understand and experience Jesus for yourself through belief. That's how we do it. We read the Bible and we believe what it says about our Lord Jesus Christ. And to many in the church, he's not their Lord. To, to some in the church, he's their Savior, but not their Lord. And even some in the church, he's not even their Savior. And guys, if he's not your Savior, you're going to hell. Old Vonda was telling me about a lady he helped yesterday get some gas. And uh, just as lost as you can be, religious, inviting him to her church. Oh, we're going to have a gospel singing. And doesn't believe in the gospel. They call it gospel, but it, it requires them to do a lot of work, upkeep, to maintain their salvation. We're talking about the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ was invented by a Freemason. Freemasons hate God. They preach about light, but they hate the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. Their light is a fake light, a fake gospel, a fake truth, which is a real lie. You know what? Uh... Sean came up with a code last night that he shared talking about the devastation of the world flip is going to happen twice. Now, we knew that. We, we knew that the orbit of Nibiru was going to come through and begin with the sixth and seventh seal judgments and continue on through the trumpet judgments, and it would go out in its orbit. And when it came back is what everybody is witnessing in Ezekiel 38. When all those fireballs come with the Lord to meet up with God, to destroy Gog of Magog and turn that whole valley into the valley of Haman Gog, his grave, a mass grave of Gog. And he's just going to be one of the many thrown into that grave, the Antichrist. There's going to be many thrown there and he's just going to be in just another one of those sinners that hates Jesus Christ. And he's going to be thrown in that grave and we believe that and we're going to come there and we're, we're going to be with Jesus. The next thing on God's timeline, guys, is the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so many people are making fun of it right now. Hey, where's your rapture? Hey, what's going on? Where's, where's the thing at? You've been talking about it since the Lord left. That's what the Bible says, Peter. People are scoffing at the Lord. People are scoffing at his judgment. People are scoffing at the earth. And they've found themselves in a rut, in a line just like the old LP records and they're in that groove and they're going along with that groove and they're stuck in that groove and they're going to say the next lines and the next phrase that comes along in that groove. And God's called us to step out of that groove into his holy word. And nobody, the, the word is not a groove. Nobody is grooved into the word. Nobody is fastened into the word these days. We're talking church people. We're talking church people who do not fear God, who do not read his word, who care nothing about his heart and how you're going to hear from his heart. And know his heart is the word of God itself. Picking it up, reading it in big chunks. Huh, Vondo? Every day. You got to read it faithfully, man. And God's called us to do that. And the church has wrongly divided Matthew 24. Okay? Now I want us to open to Matthew 24 and check it out. Matthew 24, Jesus has already ridden in on the donkey. And he's got less than a week to die. Okay? And he's cried over Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I came here to save you, man. And you hated me and you hated the prophets that were before me. You killed everybody, all of God's messengers who came your way to warn you of the judgment to come. Now, the judgment to come to Jerusalem immediately at that time happened 40 years after Jesus ascended. He ascended to heaven in A.D. 30 and the destruction come in A.D. 70, 40 years. The time of testing, God gave them plenty of time to change their minds, to repent, to turn to him. And they didn't. And we see in the history books that Jerusalem was destroyed in A.D. 70 after the 40-year time of testing that they failed. They failed the test. Guys, do not fail the test where you are. Put your faith and trust in the Lord. Read the word, know his heart, and walk alongside him as you appreciate his heart and you let him know it. Oh, Lord, thank you. We give thanks in everything we give thanks. Thank you for your Bible. Thank you for the truth. Even we thank you for the blessings on me and the destructions on them. All the way through the Bible, we see the prophet crying out, Lord, have vengeance, have vengeance, destroy these people. You said you would. Even when you read Jeremiah, oh man, what was that? 20? 
I think it was 20, Jeremiah 20, when he had been preaching. And in the chapter previous, they beat him nearly to death. The 39 saved one. They, they smote him, and it was the priest's son who did it. He was of Levi and Pasher and beat him nearly to death. And all he was doing was declaring the word of the Lord. The Lord gave him a word, and he preached it, and then they beat him over it. And he said, Lord, I just... You have you've deceived me here. You told me to preach that the destruction of of heaven was coming and I've preached it and it hasn't come yet. I've been preaching this for a while and it hadn't come yet. Lord, please have it come. Please give vengeance. And the prophets preached that. And he preached it heavy from his heart to the people and the people didn't listen. The people threw him in socks. They threw him in the dungeon. They threw him everywhere. That's what they're doing with the word of God. They pin down the word of God. They beat the word of God. They hate the word of God. They despise the word of God. It's not the prophet. It's the word of God that the prophet brought that they hate. And they hate it today. And they're wrongly dividing. Now, I haven't had a chance to check out Sean's uh, Bible code from this morning. He did one on Jonathan Matthew Wright, who is a false Bible code guy. This guy claims you know, he's of the original. And he started and, and Glazerson in, in Israel taught him how to... Glazerson don't even know how to make a decent Bible code. This guy is a re re. None of his codes are real. So Jonathan learned from a guy who doesn't know how to make Bible codes. Jonathan is not saved. Jonathan hates the Bible. He he claims he loves the Bible, but he hates the Bible because he doesn't know how to rightly divide the thing. Okay, he hates the rapture and this this. Uh, code that Sean has just made is talking about him despising the rapture and getting it all wrong. And he presented a code and it had 18 letters going up and Sean said, okay, let me look at that code. And it went for 80 something letters up. And there was a whole lot more there. And everything Jonathan was spewing out of his mouth over this code is an absolute lie and it's heresy and it's coming in the face of God. Jeremiah had that with him. Hananiah, the false prophets, were saying the exact opposite of what God was really saying in his word. And Jeremiah pinned the words that God gave him, and the king took a pen knife and cut it up and threw it into the fire. But guys, I'm holding Jeremiah in my hand right now because you can't get rid of the word of God. You may try to get rid of it. You may try to, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to hide it in my heart. And therefore, you're going to sin against God. And these people are so wicked, they don't know how to do Bible codes, and they claim to be great, and they have school, and they teach others a lie. Because they've not rightly divided. They don't understand Jesus. They don't understand. And what he hates in this Bible code, what John, Jonathan Matthew Wright hates, is the preacher rapture. And that's what God loves. That is the most beautiful gift to us. It's part of our salvation package. When you're saved, he's going to allow us and cause us to escape these horrible, horrifying things that are coming upon the earth. Are you grateful for that or what? Amen. God's love toward us. He, he doesn't want us in hell. He wants us in heaven. And he doesn't want us in hell on earth in this tribulation. And that's what the seven-year tribulation is, hell on earth. And God loves us. He doesn't want us to experience that. We will suffer tribulation. We will suffer sorrow, but not the judgment of God, not the wrath of God. And people who don't rightly divide don't understand that. I want to look at Matthew 24 today. Jesus has just ridden through the town. He cried over it and prayed over him. And then it says right here in verse 1 of Matthew 24, And Jesus went out and he departed from the temple area. And his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. They're like, man, look at these magnanimous buildings. This is awesome. Herod did a great job here. And Jesus, verse 2, said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another. Now, he was referring to the immediate attack, A.D. 70. In 40 years from now, you, what you like seeing here will not be here. It'll be raised to the ground, and not one stone will be left standing on each other. And that prophecy came true. That story that God told Jesus was a man of prophecy. Everything he said was futuristic. Everything. All, when, you, when you follow the words of Jesus, it was all futuristic. He was a prophet. And the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, uh, your Jesus is wrong if he's not the prophet Jesus. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of Jesus is the testimony of prophecy. And that is the true Jesus. And he wants you to know what's coming ahead. And he wants you to find safety in what he said. Not say, oh, that's a bunch of bunk. I'm going to go head on into this thing. And that Bible code that Sean did this morning talks about the despair that Jonathan Matthew Wright's going to face because of his falsehoods, his lies, his pride, his arrogance, and everybody like him.
So Jesus warns, they recognize the temple. Oh, look at this beauty. And Jesus says, well, that's going to be gone. Because the beauty is not found in a physical temple. It's found in the hearts of men who have received Jesus Christ, who have believed in his finished work. And now he has entered into their bodies, which is the temple. Paul asks a question. Don't you know that your bodies are the temple of God? And that is what houses God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. When you believe the Holy Spirit comes inside and he dwells and his whole purpose is to bring us comfort and rest. When you see the first 10 names of our forefathers from Adam all the way down to Noah, it was God's whole purpose was to come down to earth and he would bring those who were in despair rest and comfort. And that's been his whole plan. That's his heart. God doesn't want to smash you and judge you and destroy you, but he will after you refused his comfort over and over and over. And what's that? Refusing his word and the things he said to do. When you refuse that over and over and over and over, your temple will be raised. God is going to start coming and killing bodies and there will be none of you left. And that's his game plan. He's going to fast track this thing. And so that's what he was referring to in verses 1 and 2, the A.D. 70 attack of Titus of Rome. And they came in and they tore every one of those stones down because when they burned the temple, it melted all the gold of the temple. And that gold found its way in the cracks and crevices of the stones. And they were so wanting to get a hold of the gold that they took every stone apart, and busted them open and got all the little bits of gold that had seeped into the cracks of the rocks of the stones. And God used their covetousness, their desire for gold, their desire for more to accomplish his, pro his prophecy that he gave. He said, there will be no stones here. And their covetousness came in and made that happen. God uses the bad intentions of men to accomplish his will. He also uses the wonderful intentions of man to accomplish his will. Why don't you be on that side of an obedient servant who listens to his voice and let him bless you all the way. Verse 3. This is Matthew 24, 3. And then he went to another location. So that first two verses was concerning one topic. He met with his disciples publicly at the temple. They asked him a question. Oh, look at these stones and rocks. And now later in the day, they head to the Mount of Olives. Verse 3. And as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. So they weren't in public. It wasn't anybody else present. It was just the disciples who were there. Okay. So you got to understand this. Rightly dividing Matthew 24. They said, will you please just tell us plainly all these things? What shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Not when's the rapture going to happen? Because they didn't know anything about a rapture till one Paul the apostle came by years later. Okay, this is all this whole conversation is about the millennium. Jesus being the king of the Jews. Jesus is talking to 12 Jews who came to him and asked him a question. And one who was sitting there nodding his head didn't believe a word of it. Judas, he was there, but he didn't. He sat in church every week. He followed Jesus. He was faithful. Oh, tithe, money. He held the money bag. He was the one who could be trusted, the treasury. And he didn't care anything about it. And this guy followed for three and a half years. And there's so many people in the American church and the world church who are following Jesus, who are going straight to hell because they followed the wrong Jesus. In Judas' mind, the whole time that Jesus he was following was a zealot. And very soon, he's going to rise up and he's going to take Rome out and we can get our country back. That's what Judas was thinking. He was a zealot. He was zealous for his, he was a patriot. He wanted to make Israel great again. He wanted to make Israel great again and get rid of all the enemies, all the bad guys, all the Democrats. Get them out of here and we can make Israel great again. And that was... The spirit of Judas, guys. And if you're, if you're wanting to make America great again and not go to heaven, you have the spirit of Judas Iscariot all in you. You are deceived and you do not know the real Jesus of the Bible and you have not rightly divided his word of truth. And these 12 came to him at a different location from the temple and said, okay, now we need to know when the end of the world is going to be. And they were thinking in a Jewish mindset, no Gentile bride, no rapture, no mystery church, none of that because it was still a mystery to them. God revealed the mystery to Paul years later. Tell us the sign of your coming. That's the second coming. Does Jesus come to the earth at the rapture? 
No, he comes in the air at the rapture. That's part of the mystery. And he calls us, the mystery bride, the church, the body of Christ, up to where he is. And seven years later, this takes place. They're asking him, so when's all this going to be? When's going to be the end of the tribulation? When's going to be the beginning of your millennium? Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto him, you need to take heed that nobody deceives you. And the entire church is deceived. T.W. Tram is a great author. But he's not a prophet of God. He gets it wrong. T.W. Tram, he'll talk about the Lord's going to come at this very next feast. He'll, he'll come at trumpets. No, wait, he's coming at tabernacles. Wait, no, no, it could be Passover. And every year he comes up and he gives reasons why Jesus could come back when the Bible code says he's coming back at Pentecost. Now, I believe the Bible over an author. Don't you? And this author, he extracts all these verses from Matthew 24. And if you extract them in your post, you're dead wrong too. Because this has nothing to do with the church. This has nothing to do with the rapture. Nothing. And on to chapter 25 as well. Those virgins, the five foolish and the five wise, has nothing to do with the church. It has everything to do with who Jesus finds when he comes back. And he says, how I find you is how I will think of you. He that is wicked, let him be wicked still. He that's righteous, let him be righteous still. And when I find you that way, that's how I declare you. You're either righteous or wicked. And he's talking about the earthlings who are still here, who should have been looking for him to come back in the second coming as the Christians were looking for him to come back at the rapture seven years earlier. And then when he comes back at the end of all these things and the destruction of the world is completed and he sets up his millennial kingdom, we are going to come back with him as he sets up that millennial kingdom and we are going to be his government, the bride of Christ, the church, the body. And this has nothing to do, 24 and 25 of Matthew has nothing to do. Guys, and if you keep preaching that it does after this sermon, you are dead wrong and you oppose the living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You hate Jesus Christ who is the word made flesh. And you better catch the word and you better rightly divide. And I'm afraid that many of you can't rightly divide because you're not saved. The spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is not in you because Jesus said, I'm going to send you a comforter. And when he comes, he will teach you all things, righteous things. He will teach you the truth. And so many people preaching and writing and being authors, writing everything that opposes the truth. That's a lie, and that is of your father, the devil. I'm going to encourage you to get saved by the Holy Ghost and learn to rightly divide. Pray, pray, pray. We may have a day left, two days left. It's going to be in October. But we're going to be raptured away, and you want to be raptured away having rightly divided God's word, not being like Jonathan Matthew Wright. He hates the rapture so much, he's going to be left here. I'm going to encourage you not to go that way. Jesus sat there, verse 3, on the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came to him privately saying, hey, will you please, how did they know where to go? Where Jesus is missing, where is he at? Mount of Olives. What's he doing there? Getting with his father and praying, considering all things heavenly and eternal. They knew where to go and find him. And guys, that's where he's going to come back when he comes back the second time. Right after that second pole flip, right at the time of the second pole flip, when Jerusalem turns into three different sections and all those stars have fallen, we see that in Revelation and we see it in Ezekiel 38. That is the second coming of Jesus, not at the beginning. And Jesus says, and, and they said, tell us when these things will be and what shall be the sign of your second coming? Put the word second there so you know what Jesus is talking about, not the rapture, the end of the tribulation. When is that going to be? The end of the world. And what end of what world? The 6,000 years of the world that belonged to man with man in charge. God has given Adam and his descendants the world to rule. And 100 years into it, we gave it to the devil. And God is sick and tired of the devil ruling this world. How many of y'all sick and tired of the devil ruling this world? How many of y'all sick of abortion and hatefulness and torture of children and bloodletting? And how many of you are sick of the injustice Toward honest men, good men, hardworking people who love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are beat up every day. We are experiencing the, the rod of Satan every day on our backs. We're sick of that. And God says that day is going to come to an end. And they're asking, when will the end of that age be? The end of the world that man runs. When will the beginning of your millennium be? This is the question asked here, rightly divided. Verse 4, and Jesus answered and said unto him, you better take heed, make assure, be awakened, be alerted that no man will deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I'm the Christ, and they're going to deceive many. Many are preaching Jesus Christ from behind the pulpits today. T.D. Jakes 
and all them of the word of faith, all them people out there in Redding, California, they are teaching the lies, the lies, the lies, the lies of devil, and they're preaching that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And Jesus says, when people are preaching Jesus is Lord, you need to see the rest of their doctrine, and you'll find out that they have been deceiving you, and they're not preaching the Jesus of heaven, the Jesus of Jehovah, God himself. They're preaching a whole different Jesus. Make sure that you are not deceived, for they shall deceive many. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. What end? Go back up and read in context what end he's talking about. He's talking about the end of man's rule, the end of the 6,000 years, the end of the tribulation, when Jesus Christ himself will pick it up and say, give me that scepter and let me rule it and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, that's when the end comes is at the end of the seven year tribulation, seven years from right now. But the end is not yet. Amen. We still got seven years to go. There's going to be a lot of uh, talk still going on. Newsmen and everybody giving stories and rumors and wars here and wars there. And we know that Putin is a Putin. Okay, Putin is about to blow up the United States and then the United States is about to blow up Russia. And they probably have space based weapons that are going to do it all. They, the United Nations, all these people together are probably just going to fire on the world, including with, you know, we, we got to see the, the fake aliens and all that stuff that we're told about coming in the Bible codes. The aliens are going to arrive at the first strike and the blame will be put on them and then they'll be preaching a gospel. You humans need to come together in peace right now, in solidarity. You better quit fighting each other or we're going to come down and destroy you. You already saw what happened to that first bunch and they're going to be referring to us who were raptured out of here. Jesus Christ took us safely and wonderfully and carefully to his home to take wonderful care of us and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And they're going to make it like we were the bad guys and it was their problem because they weren't willing to unite with the ideology of the United Nations and Barack Obama and the Pope. And because of that, we had to take them out and we'll take you out too. Lies, 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 lies. What did Jesus say? And make sure that you're not deceived for the end will not be. The end will be when you see Jesus' face coming back at the second coming. And chapter 24 and 25 is all about the second coming. Keep on reading. The end is not yet. That's the end of verse 6. Highlight that. Verse 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in different places. There's going to be all this all the way through the seven-year tribulation, folks. And we see it over and over. If you'll study the prophets and if you'll study the 21 judgments, you'll see that these things repeat themselves over and over and over because God's going to take out continent after continent. It'll happen in North and South America first, and then it will move itself worldwide into another location, and they'll have their pestilence and their earthquakes and their fireballs, and they'll come to an end. And God's going to warn everybody on his way to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is where it ends. That's when the end is. When Jesus comes back and he sets down foot on the Mount of Olives where he could always be found by his disciples. He ascended from the Mount of Olives and the angel said, as you have seen him ascend, that's the same way you're going to see him come back on the Mount of Olives. But the end is not yet. You're going to see verse 8. These are just the beginning of sorrows. Are we seeing some of that stuff take place now? Are we seeing it take place? And just at first strike, nuclear strike, just at the big events at the tidal waves and the tsunami. And just at that, boom, Jesus is going to pull us out. And then that is the beginning of these things, the beginning of these sorrows. And you ain't seen nothing yet. That was just day one. Praise God. God's telling us what's going on. And this has nothing to do with a rapture. The rapture has already happened when Matthew 24 begins. Know that. This has nothing to do with the rapture. Don't you ever again use Matthew 24 and 25 as rapture references because you will be wrong and you'll be posing Jesus who taught Matthew 24 and 25. He's talking to the Jews about the Jews and about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, when he is its physical king on earth. That's what this is in context. Know and understand today and rightly divide. And don't you be, don't you be one who's proclaiming the word of God and lost as a goose preaching it wrong. That's why I believe most people can't decipher and rightly divide this because they are lost. They believe in a Jesus where they can lose their salvation. They believe in a Jesus that is someone different than the one telling the story. 
And because they don't know him, they get the story wrong as they proclaim it as the self-righteous teachers that they aren't. Continuing on. These are the beginning of sorrows, verse 9, and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. As soon as the rapture happens, there is, this will happen after the rapture. Guys, let's start every verse with after the rapture. Let's say that. After the rapture, they shall, verse 9, after the rapture, then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. After the rapture shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. People are going to say, I thought I was saved. Uh, why didn't the Lord come rapture me? Well, it's because you were a oneness holiness who didn't believe in the Trinity. You believed in a different God and you've been left behind. Why didn't God get me? Because you were a Baptist trusting in your baptism. Why didn't Jesus get me? And people are going to be offended at God because they didn't listen to him and rightly divide the word of truth on how they could be delivered at the time of the rapture. And now they find themselves after the rapture being involved with these situations. So after the rapture and read the next verse. Let's do it again. Verse 11. After the rapture, many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. That happened before the rapture too. And that's why a lot of folks were stuck on earth because they listened to these false deceivers. Guys, Everybody, everybody in the word of faith, everybody in the word of faith is wicked, okay? Because they want your money. You read that story back there in 2 Kings, I believe it's chapter 5, where Naaman, the Syrian, got leprosy. And he was dying. Guys, leprosy will take out your fingernails, your hair. You'll be, get, your flesh begins to rot off and you'll lose your finger joint by joint by joint by joint. It's a heinous sentence, leprosy and he got this and he was a man of renown you guys know that Haman is believed and it's taught by the Jews when they're in their synagogues teaching that it was he who bent his bow back and at a venture let it go and boom it got Ahab right in between the chest they believe it was him that did that and he was ranked high because because he took out the king of Israel and now he's back there in Syria doing his thing and he gets this leprosy and during that invasion of killing the king and all that, they took a bunch of captives home and among those captives was a little girl and she became a private little maid, a prisoner of war in his home. And while he was developing this leprosy and he was the great hero and now he was slowly becoming the outcast because leprosies could, could, could have, couldn't hang out with each other in Israel. But you see in this, this story that they were hanging out with each other and he had uh, his soldiers alongside him while he was traveling. The little girl said, you need to make your way to Elisha, the prophet in Israel. There's a prophet in Israel. Praise God she was brought up in a godly home. Now remember, Israel was a wicked, wicked place who didn't have the temple. They worshiped false gods up there with those 10 tribes and they were against the Lord. But remember what God told Elijah. No, dude, there's 7,000 of you up there. That, that, ain't, that ain't a lot among millions, but there's 7,000 of you who still follow me and believe in me and haven't knelt down to Baal. And so she was one of those households. And she, and, and the, oh, bad things happen to good people. How in the world could she be taken captive if God loved her? Because God loved Naaman and wanted him to hear the gospel. And so she was taken. And guys, we rejoice in every situation we find ourselves in because God is large and in charge. And it means something right now. It means something today. Believe him and trust him. God, we make our plans, but it is God who directs our steps. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And as rivers of water, God will guide that king's heart wherever he wants it to go. God is large and in charge. And we need to rejoice where we find ourselves now. And this little girl said, oh, Haman, you need to get, or, or Naaman, Naaman, you need to get yourself over to the prophet. And then, of course, we see that he writes the letter to the king. The king's like, what? Because the king ain't in tune. The prophet and the king don't get along. The prophet hasn't been allowed in the palace for a long, long time. So he doesn't know what to do. And finally, somebody turns him on to Elisha and says, man, dude, Elisha, he's the man. And so they sent Naaman and his entourage down to Elisha to be healed from his leprosy. They get there. They get down to his house. And the servant comes in and says, hey, Naaman, uh, the king uh, has sent the great commanding soldier, the, the head of all the armies of Syria down here. He's got leprosy and he needs to be cleansed. Instead of coming out himself, Elisha sends out Gehazi. And says, you go tell him that he go jump in a lake. 
seven times. You go jump in a river Jordan seven times, you'll be healed. Go jump in a lake. And the guy gets inflamed. David says, Jordan, that thing's a muddy little skanky river. I got beautiful rivers up here in Syria. Why can't we? I just do it there. And he was so mad and he left in a rage. And his entourage, one of his boys stood up, a couple of his boys stood up and says, hey, captain, he told you to do something easy. We came here. If he told you to offer 100,000 oxen and sheep, you would have done it just to get healing. But all he told you is to go jump in a lake and dip yourself seven times. Why don't you go do that and try it? And he did. We see the story. He came out and his baby, his skin was like baby skin. Fresh, clean, no longer drying up and his fingernails falling off and his hair falling out. He was healed whole. And he came back to the prophet and he made his way to his house from the Jordan River, which was a 30 mile trip. He made his way to the prophet and he said man i want to reward you he said i know you got prophets around you that probably need some food and stuff and i want to give you a gift and elijah elisha refused the gift he says no because we're not gonna uh do the lord's service for money this time okay yes there are prophets that need help yes there are mouths that need to be fed but right now we're pretty good and we're not going to receive your offering and he sent him away and gehazi we see the story the servant ran over there and he lies to himself he lies to Naaman and he lies to Elisha afterwards. And it's all about the covetousness of the money. And he blamed it on God's service. And that's what's happening in the pulpits all across America today. Everybody's receiving their tithes and offerings and they're lying and they're saying it in the name of God. They're lying to themselves. They're lying to God. They're lying to the people. And God says, mm, I'm coming back to get mine. And everybody has turned the work of God into covetousness, desiring more for me. And they preach it from the pulpit. And that's all, all, all of TBN preachers, all of them. That's all of the God TV preachers. That's all the people who oppose God, and they have wrongly divided the word of truth. And they are going to be left here in the tribulation because they are liars. They are deceiving false prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing. Guys, I don't, I've never seen a sheep wear a three-piece $2,000 suit. That's not sheep clothing what they're wearing. Okay, they're not even wearing sheep's clothing. These heisters and shysters and liars. God comes to you and says, you need to rightly divide the truth. And what they're doing is extracting and exacting all of the widow's money out of her, telling her, if you'll invest your seed into our ministry, you'll get a huge harvest. And that's exactly the verbiage Gehazi used. We're going to take this money and we're going to exact it into the Lord's ministry when he was going to shove it deep into his pockets. And God has been sick of it way back before Jesus got here, and he's sick of it now. And we're at the end of it now of, for the church age. God has allowed his bride to go through this long enough. He is tired of it, and he made his promise. And he's going to rapture us, and he's going to rapture us very soon in the next few days. It'll be Elul 29 on his calendar, and he's going to take us upward, and he's going to begin his judgment on all these people. And there's so many people who are uh, fighting God, but there's going to be so many people immediately who realize they had been lied to, and they will believe, and they will be hated for the namesake of Jesus Christ. They're going to finally believe it, and they'll be hated. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. You said God would save us. You said, and they're going to they're gonna hate each other over what they misinterpreted because they didn't rightly divide the word of truth. And there is going to be a massive rebellion from Christianity. They were never saved, but they belonged to Christian churches. The Episcopals, the Presbyterians, the Catholics, all these people who named the name of Christ who followed a different Jesus. They are going to cause a rebellion that is that they don't know that they're involved with now, but it will become manifest. They are involved. If you don't follow the Jesus Christ, if you don't believe in him, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, who rightly divided the word and gave us this passage here and told us the context of it, where it was and for whom it would be and when it would happen, and you've not rightly divided it, you're going to get the story wrong, and he's going to come back and judge you because you misappropriated his word Guys, it's that important. Do not misappropriate God's word in the plain text or the coded text. Believe ye him. Verse 12. And because of iniquity shall, shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. This is a post-rapture verse. Not enduring to the end for the saints. We will have been raptured, pre-trib raptured, and then this verse, let's read it, is after the rapture. Verse 13, and after the rapture, he that endures to the end shall be saved. That's how you need to read every one of these verses after the rapture. 
Verse 14, after the rapture, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. You and I don't preach the, the gospel of the kingdom. We preach the gospel of grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And our kingdom is in heaven, not of this earth. King, the kingdom of heaven is what we're all looking toward and focusing our hearts on, our minds, our eyeballs, on the kingdom of heaven, in heaven, a physical place. And at the end of the seven years, Jesus will come down here to earth and he'll take up his kingdomship here. And it's the kingdom of earth, the kingdom of heaven will happen here after the seven year tribulation, after the rapture. The rapture, the seven year tribulation, and then the millennial kingdom sets up here on earth. Verse 14, after the rapture, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations, and then shall the end come. Amen. Not the rapture, the end. The end of man's foolish rule. Who's the last man to get to rule? Barack Obama, the Antichrist. And he's going to come to a sudden end when Jesus shows up, and then these things will end after the rapture. Verse 15. After the rapture, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoever reads, let him understand. Will you understand on this side and be saved by grace through faith and quit trusting in yourself to get you to heaven? Your, your, your ability to endure to the end. Okay, this is not our salvation message for now. This is a salvation message that you're reading here for after the rapture. Verse 16. After the rapture, then let him that is in Judea flee to the... Now, we know that this is the mid-trib event. It's definitely after the rapture. This whole passage has been after the rapture. And then they say, okay, now this part is after the rapture. It's at the mid-trib point. It's when the Antichrist has been shot. He raises from the dead. He goes into the temple to declare himself to be God. He's missing an eye. His right hand is gimped up. Sympathy for the devil. He goes in there and claims himself to be God. He comes back out and says, I am the only God. There is no Jehovah. Do not believe in anything else. And if you do, we're coming for you. And it's gonna, the price tag is going to be your head. We will cut your heads off. Verse 17. After the rapture, let him which is on the housetop. This is mid-trib, mid guys. Three and a half years after we've been raptured, these events happen. Uh, let him run to Judea. Don't take anything out of your house. Verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back. You head straight away to the hills. God will protect you there. And only one third of all of the Israel population that exists right now will make it to the hills. Okay. And be saved. The others will get the mark of the beast and they're all going to die. They'll die slowly within the next three and a half years or when Jesus comes back and kills them all at the valley. Okay. Verse 19, and woe unto them that are with child and to those who give suck in those days. That's the three and a half year mark. But pray that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. This is to Jews. You and I don't honor a Sabbath day. We honor the Lord of the Sabbath, the Lord of the rest. And we've been doing that for 2000 years. What's greater, a day or God? God created days. We don't lift anything that he created higher than himself. And that's what all of America does. They lift their favorite football teams, the Vikings. The Vikings were Nephilim who hated God. Why are you worshiping the Vikings this morning up there in Minnesota and around the world? Why are you doing that? And the Packers and everybody else. Why are you doing that today? Because you are lifting idols, the created above the creator. And Romans chapter one gives a great, Great warning against that. Verse 21. Then shall there be great tribulation such as not, not was since the beginning of the world to this time. Okay. So for the, there's going to be a rapture. Praise God. God's going to save us from tribulation. Tribulation begins immediately at Barack Obama agreeing to a covenant. That'll happen for three and a half years. Then all these things will be taking place. All of Matthew 24 will be happening during that three and a half years. When he's crying, peace, 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 until he goes into the temple after being assassinated and declares himself to be God. And then it kicks up notches unknown, this terrible wrath, this terrible anger, this terrible punishments. OK, and it's coming from the from the man side of God's judgment. God's judgments have been falling. The first seven seals, the trumpet judgments, the seven trumpet judgments, all this stuff will be and will have been happening the whole time. And that second half of the tribulation is when the devil is stuck on earth and there is a whole different angle of rage and wrath here. God's wrath includes the one everybody wanted to adore. 
My wife and I went driving around in the country yesterday enjoying the last of what God's going to do here before he burns this place to the ground. My city will be underwater at this earth flip when the poles shift here between February and April of next year. It's within the next six months. When that happens, my town will be underwater. So we were driving out there and seeing what God had ready and, and made available for us to see and the beautiful trees. And even in the cursed version, his creation is beautiful, isn't it? He's going to come back and he's going to remove all the curse. And how much more beautiful it's going to be then. We're driving out there and we see these beautiful homes, these beautiful lawns and out in the country, these farm homes. And they've got these beautiful harvest setups. And with their harvest setups, with the pumpkins and the turnips and everything they've got out there, they've got the ghosts and the goblins and the ghouls. Instead of thanking God for our harvest, and that's what the Feast of Tabernacles was set up for. The last, the seventh feast of all of them was to rejoice in the Lord and all the harvest that he had given us. And instead of giving God the glory, these people are giving the devil the glory. And right next to them, they'll say, Jesus saves. Jesus saves with all the ghouls and goblins and the ghosts and Frankenstein and the rest of them. Because they're not giving, there was no sign that said, we thank God absolutely for this wonderful harvest that we've experienced this year. You'll see the results of a harvest, the pumpkins and all the other stuff, and you'll see Satan's trademark. You'll see Satan's representative right there. And we saw it all the way, we're here in the Bible Belt, all the way northeast Arkansas to southeast Missouri and we come back around and we saw it and we didn't see anybody bringing glory to the Lord Jesus Christ for the great harvest and they're not going to be able to enjoy the harvest this year. God's going to take it all from them. You've had your chance and you blew it there. Bible Belt Christian America. Wickedness. Neither gave God they the glory. I'm encouraging you to give God all the glory. Get rid. Don't have anything to do with the devil and his Halloween. Anton LaVey, the beginner of the Church of Satan. He's the one that wrote the book of Satan. In 1969, it was published. And he said, I'm so glad that the Christians will at least serve Satan one day of the year and have their children serve Satan one day of the year. And he was referring to Halloween. Look at Halloween, guys, and see if you see anything biblical and that brings glory to the Lord Jesus Christ in that, that, that points to life instead of death. Jesus is the life. He said, in him is no death at all. So if you're celebrating death, you're celebrating the devil. Amen? Quit serving the devil. You have a day maybe or two. To get right, get your hearts right with the Lord and rightly divide the word of truth and rightly divide the customs of the country you live in and the land in which you dwell and have nothing to do with the pagan customs of that land. They come in different varieties and if you can't see it in the Bible, get away from it. If it doesn't bring glory to life and the one who is life, eternal life, giving us eternal life, the gift, if it has nothing to do with Jesus of Nazareth, get rid of it now. Burn it to the ground. Verse 19, after the rapture at the mid-trib, woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days and pray that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. We know this is not talking to us because God never, Paul never refers to us in our Christian walk, in our mystery church to refer to anything about the Sabbath day because we have one greater, the Lord of the Sabbath. For it's going to be such great tribul tribulation. Uh, the tribulation will have happened for three and a half years and many people will die. They will be destroyed. But now the devil's here and he's pinned. You ever seen a pinned animal, a trapped animal in a corner? One that normally would hide from man? Bobcats. We were talking about bobcats. You don't see bobcats running around a, a housing areas. They, they usually try to stay away and, and they're skittish and, and unless you live out in the country. If you live out in the country, you'll see them out there by your house crying like babies and they'll come to you but they won't usually attack you they have the fear of man in them and they'll go the other way when they see you okay and so it is with the devil and his way but now the devil is going to be trapped in a corner he has been coming subtly for a long time like a snake and at this point he becomes the dragon and he's going to come at you full force and this will be a tribulation like nobody has ever known at the second half of the tribulation okay the first half is bad. The second half is bad with Satan's anger involved. Okay, continuing on. Verse 21. And then shall be great tribulation such as was not seen since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be again. And except those days should have been shortened, there should be no flesh saved alive, but for the elect. The elect is the Israelites. 
You and I are not the elect. When you read about the elect in the book of Romans, it is Israel. He talks about Jacob and Esau. They are the elect of God. Okay? And uh, those of us, we are elected in Christ Jesus. We are not the elect of Israel. Israel is the elect, especially in these passages here, talking about tribulation. The elect is Israel. The elect is Israel. And when he gathers the elect from the four corners of the world, that is everybody who survived the tribulation. The elect of Israel. Verse 23. And if any man shall say to you, we're in, we're in Matthew 24, 23. And if any man say to you, hey, there's Jesus, there's Christ, or over there, believe it not, because he told us where he's going to be and how he's going to show up. He's going to descend from heaven with 10,000s of his saints. He's going to land on the Mount of Olives. There's going to be a massive earthquake when Nibiru comes back by and reflips this world. It's going to rip Jerusalem in three different portions and de- you know, create great destruction throughout the whole world. That's when Jesus has stepped back. When you see all the fireballs falling and you see all the birds circling. When you see all the birds circling, that right there is where Jesus just killed Obama and the rest of them. Because they're coming down to have them a feast. They're going to eat on the dead bodies and they're gonna, God's going to let them do it. And when you see all that happening, then you know Jesus has shown up on the scene. Until then, he hadn't rightly divided the word of truth. 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. Now, we have that on our side, but this is talking about then too. And they shall do great signs and wonders. I mean, the Pope, right? The Pope's going to be doing great signs and wonders. He is the second beast. And he's going to rise up and say, I am the the great one, the miracle worker. I'm pointing you to the real Messiah. And his name is Barack Obama. This is referring to that little group that Jesus is going to destroy in the end. They are the world rulers and they're going to cut everybody off, kill everybody who won't agree with them and their teaching, their false teaching about their false Christ, Barack Obama. And many are going to rise up and point to him and say, oh, he's the Christ. The 10 kings are going to do it. The Pope's going to do it. The United Nations is going to do it and say, Barack Obama is the Christ. Believe them not because Christ will not touch this world until after he has destroyed this world. And where he's going to touch down is Mount Olives in outside of Jerusalem. Continue on. Behold, verse 25, I told you this all before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he's in the desert. Don't go there right now, right now, right now. This Sanhedrin is saying that the Messiah is in the desert of Judean hills. They've met with him and they're in conversations. Okay, believe them not. That happens on this side and that side. And you and I, we're not looking for a false Messiah. We know that Jesus is the only true Messiah and they have refused him. And we're looking for him to rapture us to the sky. And then all these lies will continue here afterwards. Verse 26, wherefore, if they say unto you, behold, he's in the desert. Don't go there. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Uh, what's that? The dumbs, the underground bases. He's in the secret chambers of the earth. He, he, he's hiding down there. He's hiding down in wh- where the moles and the bats are and the caves and the holes. Uh, don't believe them. 27, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall the coming of the son of man be. You will know when he showed up, he won't be hiding in some hole somewhere. He's going to come and it's going to be openly known and there will be lightning storms. Why? Because Nibiru. Have you guys noticed the lightning storms this time while Nibiru is coming in? It's going to do the same thing after it makes its orbit and comes back in. There's going to be lightnings and there's going to be pillars of fire. It's going to happen again. God's servant is going to do what God's servant always does consistently. Coming in, going out, and coming back in again. It'll be the same thing that we're seeing before the rapture. Why it's happening now is so we can look up and say, wow, this is crazy. I need Jesus. And many will refuse. And he's going to come back. And just before it comes back, God's going to make it happen again. So people say, I need Jesus and not this false Christ. I need Jesus. And Jesus will come back during all these lightnings from the east, from the west. And it's going to show people that we need Jesus now on this side before the rapture. And they're going to need Jesus on that side before he shows up. Because when he shows up, when he touches down, you're stuck being who you are. He that is wicked, let him be wicked still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that has chosen Jesus and his ways over Obama and his. He who has refused the mark of the beast will be saved and Jesus considers you righteous. And blessed is he who makes it to the 1,335th day. Verse 28, Matthew 24, 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, all those bodies that Jesus killed, 
Wherever, you'll know right where Jesus is when you see all the buzzards flying above. When you see all the birds of carrion flying above, that is this. Where the eagles will be gathered together, that's where Jesus is. Be, just be looking for the bird herd, will you? And that's a, that's a warning to you guys who've been left behind. Where is Jesus? Look up and find out the circling birds in Israel. That's right where he is at the valley of Haman Gog. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. So that's some great tribulation. And there's still more tribulation coming, guys. There's still, this is not to the Christian saint who is the bride of Christ. This is to people who have become believers after the rapture. And immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon will not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. This is the bold judgments, okay? It's all happened over in America and the other continents and everywhere else, but this is happening, happening in Jerusalem. This is happening in Israel, Okay, that's the last focal point of all of God's judgment and tribulation. There has been tribulation for six and a half years all over the world. And now the focal point has come here to Israel and the tribulation is here. So after the tribulation of those days in the other locations, it's coming your way, Israel. That's what this is saying. After the tribulation of those days, immediately the sun will be dark and blah, blah. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens Nibiru, Nibiru, write your note there. We have the sign of the Son of Man coming in now. That sign's going to go out and that sign's going to come back. That is God's judgment system. His sign in the heaven is Nibiru, the judgment system. And when you see that, you repent because when Jesus touches down, it's too late, pal. You better notice his signs. And the Christian church won't even notice his signs. They poo-poo. Oh, those signs in the heaven. You guys are so wrong. Those blood moons. Oh, how stupid. That was a fiasco failure. It was God telling us that he's coming in judgment. It was God speaking to us. Listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as, it, as they did in the provocation, provoking God. Then you will see the Son of Man. After you see Nibiru come back around, you're going to see Jesus coming out of the clouds in heaven with all power and glory. At the rapture, nobody will see Jesus. At the second coming, everybody will see Jesus. Matthew 24 and 25 has nothing to do with the rapture and everything to do with the tribulation. Do you believe that in here today? Have we rightly divided it today? You're going to see Jesus then, verse 31. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. There's trumpets all over the place. When you have a king, you have trumpets, folks. Okay, the trumpets are going to be sounding at the rapture. That is the voice of God, the shofar trumpet. And then their trumpets are going to sound on the feast of memorial. People crying and shouting and wondering why they weren't raptured. People so dis in despair because they weren't raptured. That'll happen on the feast of trumpets. There'll be trumpets sounding that day. There'll be trumpets of war all the way through the seven years. There's going to be seven trumpets, judgments that God sends and the angels are going to sound the trumpets. There will be trumpet, 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 trumpet. And not every trumpet trumpet is the shofar of rapture. You've got to understand this. The shofar of rapture is God's voice alone. We are raptured and then there's thousands of trumpets afterwards. And then when Jesus gets here, he sends his angels to blow trumpets and it gathers all the elect from around the world. We're here. We've arrived. We've come to save you. Wouldn't you love to hear that trumpet sound if you were left behind and you made it all the way to the end? They're going to love it and they're going to come gather. They're looking for the eagles. They know where they've seen the lightning in the locations and they're going to come gather to Jerusalem and Jesus is going to take care of them and feed them. Take care of them for the rest of the thousand years. He's so good. Verse 32, uh, oh, verse 31. Then shall he send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the, and the, people have got this thing wrong too, but it's, we're coming up on the parable of the fig tree, coming at the end of the 80 years. The fig tree, the nation was planted in 48, but the Knesset was formed in 49. You count 80s, you get to 2029. Isn't that beautiful? And we know that the fig tree, the, the life of a man is 70 years, and if by strength, and it is only God who gives the strength to continue on in troubles. You're going to find yourself Christian tired and wore out right now and the devil's come to slow you down he's come to make your life hard he's come to keep you from taking that next step keep taking the next step after we're raptured he's going to do that to the saints in the tribulation he's going to kill many he's going to kill most but blessed is he who makes it to this time of arrival when nibiru makes it back the sun 
the, the sign of the Son of Man, Jesus touches down, lightning, birds, all that stuff will be evident. And this is at the very end. Jesus is answering their question. They said, when will the end of these things be? And he started at the beginning of those things after the rapture. He continues on and he gets to the part where he shows back up. That's the part they were wanting to hear. And that's the part every Jew who's been left behind will want to hear. When you're coming back, Lord, when's the end of these things going to be? Please come back. Help us. Help us, Lord. And he's going to come back and save them all. Aren't you thankful for that? Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 is not for the Christian, is not for the bride. It is for Israel and those left behind in the tribulation. You read that carefully and you say after the rapture, before every verse, after the rapture, these things will happen. Meanwhile, after the rapture, we're going to have the exact opposite in heaven. Bliss, joy, marriage, supper of the Lamb, rewards given, be gathered around Jesus and all our loved ones who've gone on before that we... That we weren't able to touch and see and enjoy for so many years. Now we're going to be right there with them. The joys of heaven opposes the fears and the horror of the tribulation. And after the rapture, it's going to be bad here and it's going to be great here. Jesus is not talking to any Christian in Matthew 24 and 25. And when you read that, he's not talking to you if you're a believer. If you're an unbeliever, he's looking you straight in the eyes and saying, this is what's going to happen to you and this will be your end if you do not believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ, we encourage you to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection for you. Jesus did this for you so you wouldn't have to go through tribulation. Tribulation is just the next step on your way to hell. You're on your way to hell right now. And that's why Jesus came to free you from that if you'll believe in him. He became your escape. He became the way out. People poo-poo the escape. You're poo-pooing Jesus. He is our escape. He's our way out. He is the door of exit. Aren't you thankful for the exit door? And he's also that same door that exited us from earth is the same door that enters us into heaven. And Jesus is that door. He's the door of the sheepfold. And if you try coming any other way, you ain't coming to his heaven. And he's coming to get us on the 29th of Elul. And we are in Elul and he's coming to get us now. Are you saved? Are you ready? Are you believing this story? Is Jesus Christ your Savior? You can't help you. You can't keep you safe. You can't do anything on God's behalf to get you to heaven. Only God on his own behalf must do this for you. And you must believe that it's only God about God. He's the one doing it. He's the one keeping. He's the one saving. He's the one keeping me saved. Aren't you thankful for that? Believe today. Read Matthew 24 and 25 the way God taught it. The way he answered the question that was so clearly asked. Not when is the rapture going to be? When is the tribulation going to be over and you'll become king and stupid, sinful man will quit reigning and ruining everything and you'll be our king? When is that going to happen? God answers it in Matthew 24 and 25. Listen to his answers. Let's pray.